Hi. Hello, everyone. Hi. 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 Welcome, everyone, to the seventh Google X Prize uh, Lunar X Prize Team Hangout. Uh, I am your fill-in host for th for this week. Pamela Gay is out of town. I'm Nicole Gallucci. I work with the CosmoQuest project, and I am really delighted to be here with the team from Space IL. They're going to tell us a little bit about their uh, their program for the Google Lunar X Prize. Uh, remember that, uh, like with all our Hangouts, if you'd like to participate, you can use the Q&A or question and answer app. Uh, it'll show up on your screen with join the conversation in the little yellow box in the video wherever you're watching this on YouTube or on Google+. So we'll be taking questions and comments from there. Uh, we already have a hello and good morning from Nancy Graziano. So hi, Nancy. Uh, and so welcome. This is the Space IL team. We have Yariv, Sandy, Avi, and Daniel. So hello, everyone. Hey. So why don't you each uh, introduce yourselves and tell everybody what your role is on the project. Hi everybody, my name is Daniel. First, on behalf of Team Space IL, we want to thank our one of our key sponsors, Bezik. They are the Israeli telecommunications company. And in their offices, we're doing this webcam. Uh, they have the fastest internet connection in all of Israel, so we wanted to make sure that we could be with you all today. Uh, so thank you, Bezik. Um, I'm Daniel. I, I lead external relations for the project. Cool. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Avi Barlia, and I lead the uh, attitude and orbit control systems you know, of uh, the spacecraft. Cool. Hi, everyone. I'm Sandy, and I lead the avionic team leader in Space Sail spacecraft. Hi, everyone. My name is Yoav Lanzmann. Uh, I'm the chief systems engineer in Space Sail. Cool. Well, welcome, everybody. Um, to get started, I uh, noticed a tweet from the Google Lunar X Prize uh, the other day that said that you guys got started. Uh, this is a, a a project that started on a bar napkin and is headed to the moon. Can you t maybe explain what that means? Sure, absolutely. Uh, Space Isle began three years ago when one of our co-founders, Yarif Bash, who's an electronics engineer, uh, got it in his head that he wanted to have Israel join the Google Lunar X Prize competition. Uh, so he called his friend Kfir Damari, uh, actually posted on Facebook, uh, who wants to go to the moon, uh, after he bought the domain name. And Kfir was one of the first to respond. Kfir's a, a computer science engineer. He said, if you're serious, I'm in. So they called their other friend, uh, Yoratan, who's a, a, a space engineer. You need one of those if you're going to go to the moon. The three of them sat down together three years ago uh, in a bar in Cholon, a city outside of Tel Aviv, and they started plotting their way to the moon. Uh, and very early on, they realized that uh, they wanted Space IL to be the first Israeli spacecraft to land on the moon, but not the last. Mm. So they structured Space IL as an educational nonprofit to inspire kids all over Israel to become scientists and engineers and to spur a new movement in space and engineering here in Israel. Very cool. Uh, why don't I would like to hear a little bit from each of you how you got involved in this project. Um, okay, I'll start. Um, I was a space enthusiast since ever. <laughs> I, I was that kid that uh, um, uh, memorized uh, planetary data sheets and read all the science fiction. Yeah. And I'm actually that boy till this day. Uh, but I'm also an aerospace engineer. I have a master's in uh, planetary sciences. I worked for over a decade in operations and systems engineer. Uh, systems engineering uh, of the Israeli commercial communication satellites. And two, two years ago, I left my job in order to do science. I wanted to start my PhD in planetary sciences and to do much more science outreach, um, which I'm doing and I'm allowed to do. And um, a year ago, these guys came to me and uh, asked me kindly to uh, join the effort of uh, designing the spacecraft as an experienced uh, systems engineer. And since then, I'm part of this awesome group uh, designing the first Israeli spacecraft to the moon. Excellent. Sandy? So three years ago, <clears throat> I went to a barbecue of a friend. She told me I'm volunteering in Space IL. It's an organization. I need someone to help me with the name tags. So I said, okay, I'll be in front. 
uh, I came, and then I started sending the first Israeli spacecraft to the moon. Um, I didn't know anything about planetary or space, but I'm a hardware engineer, been working and managing projects, and I thought, wow, that's interesting, doing something for space. I've been a volunteer for three years in the project, doing my job as a team leader, and two months ago, I quit my job joining full-time to Space ILT. Excellent. Cool. Um, well, uh, I also joined Space IL uh, about three years ago, uh, about the same time with Sandy, and uh, the way I got to Space IL is that I, I was working at the Weizmann Institute in Israel. Uh, I had a research position uh, over there uh, where I did my uh, PhD. And I was working with one of the students on his uh, uh, PhD uh, studies. And I just saw uh, the Space L uh, logo, the insignia, as a sticker on, on his desk. And I was sure that it was uh, something that he, he was part of an Air Force some some Air Force uh, uh, squadron or something, and I asked him, what is it? Where, where is it in, in the Air Force? He told me it's not the Air Force, it's uh, the Israeli uh, team that's going to build a, sp uh, a spacecraft to land on the moon, and he was one of the volunteers exactly in the uh, attitude and orbit control system. He was a volunteer. Uh, so he asked me, uh, do you want to join? Join us landing a spacecraft on the moon? I think it took me less than a second to, to, to say yes. And it's a nice story because uh, he's still telling the story that he recruited his uh, uh, boss. I, I moved to Israel one year ago. I wanted to work on uh, big, uh, ambitious projects helping to shape the future of the country. And I never thought I'd be working on a spacecraft, but that's how it works sometimes. So here I am. Yeah, I love it. It's like, someone asked me to go to the moon with them. How can I turn that down? <laughs> exactly. Excellent. So a little bit about the, the project itself. Um, you guys are working to make sure you use every single part of the of the spacecraft body uh, during the mission. Can you tell us a little bit about what's um, what's inspiring the, the design of the spacecraft? What's inspiring? Yeah, uh, like what kinds of technologies are you, are you working into that? OK. Uh, the concept is because we uh, lack of uh, huge resources, the spacecraft has to be small. It has to be smart. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the concept, basically. The inspiration is doing the impossible. Um, we plan a spacecraft which is about the size of a dishwasher machine. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it, will, it will be complete. Uh, it would land on the moon uh, uh, completely. We have kind of model here. Oh, very See cool. That? This yep, is the yep, spacecraft, yep. Um, and that's it. I think it, it's it's small, and uh, um, I think that and every every part we take with us, we're thinking twice what we can do with that more than it should be on the contest. Um, rules. For example, if we're using the cameras, we're thinking of how to use the cameras in order to navigate. Um, we're, every part we're taking with us to the moon, we're trying to have more than one um, uh, solution for one of our problems. So our transceiver, for example, that we're using is also using us for ranging. So every part we take with us, we're trying to make it smarter and add more features in order to have more than one solution for our problems. Awesome. Another thing we're trying to do is taking industrial parts to space, which is hard, um, but that enables us to use technology that is way further than space technology that we talk today and making nano passable and more, um, what's the word? And, and more, very, more available. available and cheaper. Yeah. yeah. So I'm not sure cheaper is the right word, <laughs> okay. because for every Less part we take, we take with us, we, we learn we need to do more and more adaptation for space. Yeah. But it's for sure it's smaller and smarter. So that's what we're trying to do, to get more industrial parts mm -hmm. uh, with us. So that's something inspiring, because when we're seeing technology today for space, uh, it's really large parts and old processors 
and nothing to do with the technology we have today. Right, right. So um, it's it says on your on your team page for the the X Prize you're you're using nano and micro satellite technologies. Is that what you're talking about with everything being smaller and from industry? Exactly. Okay. So sometimes I, I I would say the challenge there is that since we are taking parts that are uh, not usually standard in the uh, in, in the space industry, even though it's it is used in, in nano satellites maybe, but not. NASA style or, or ESA style uh, kind of, of space missions, mm -hmm. then we have to uh, solve more difficult problems because if it's a sensor, then usually it's not as good a sensor as you could buy if you had more money or more mass budget uh, to it. So we then solve it with with this with the with the special of being smart. It can be in algorithms. It can be with smart usage of these kind of sensors or other. The devices that we have in, in the spacecraft, because we we are facing risks, uh, because we are taking these uh, lesser parts, but we can solve them in a smart way. Cool. Uh, I just wanted to uh, put in that we got a comment from Ilad Avron. Uh, the Israeli Air Force changed its name some years back to the Israeli Air and Space Corps. Proud to be part of that family. So thank you for that comment. Um, so part of the X Prize is that you have to be able to move across the moon uh, for a certain distance. It's uh, I guess 500 meters on, above, or below the surface of the moon, and you guys have kind of a unique way of approaching that. So can you tell us a little bit about that, the hop you guys are making on the moon? First, we thought about below, but it's kind of impossible. But uh, no, actually, just let me uh, <laughs> let me uh, correct you. Below is possible. If we land fast enough, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and this is, you know, a mitigation plan for me. Yeah, I saw the simulations. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, okay, we've got a spacecraft uh, which has already has its uh, uh, thrusters uh, for for the maneuvering uh, on the way to the moon, and uh, of course during the landing, there's a uh, thrusters uh, below. Uh, and if we already have a propulsion system, then why not use it uh, in order to uh, uh, move the spacecraft 500 meters? So uh, after we land and take the, the images and uh, transmit whatever we have to do, whatever we have to transmit, uh, we just start the engine again and hop. And land again, of course. I'll tell a funny anecdote. What's that? I said I'll, I'll share a funny anecdote. Yeah. Uh, we. We happen to be the last team to register for the competition. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very Israeli of us. We, the <laughs> deadline was the very end of 2010, so on December 31st, 2010 is when we registered. Uh, one, the last day at the last moment. Correct. But one of the advantages was that we got to look at what the other teams were planning, what they were mm -hmm. doing. And when the co-founders sat down to look at the problem, they realized that uh, most of the other teams, if not all, were building rovers to mm -hmm. go over the surface of the moon. Now, for them to sit down and develop a rover would be two years of R&D. They'd lose the competition altogether. And what they realized was that for every pound of rover that they have to bring, they need between three and four pounds of a propulsion system. Mm -hmm. Your mission just grows uh, exponentially. And so uh, they realized that the hardest part is to land a spacecraft on the moon. And if they build the propulsion system and the craft itself the right way, why not use that same propulsion system to hop over the surface of the moon? Uh, that one decision, realization, saved them two years of R&D and millions of dollars uh, in, in, in mass and, and budget. Is it going to be all one hop? Or is it yeah. a series of smaller hops? Uh, yeah. No, no, just one. Yeah. One hop. If we have extra fuel after we complete the, the, the mission, hopefully we're first and we've hopped and we've landed. We've now won $20 million and we've inspired the whole country to dance in the streets of uh, Tel Aviv and all over Israel. <laughs> uh, then you can picture our little spacecraft hopping around all over the moon, uh, looking for other landing sites and maybe one of the uh, Apollo landing sites. We'll take a picture of it. That would be pretty cool. That sounds like, yeah. That that sounds cool and adorable all at the same time. I, I want to see the little hopping spacecraft. <laughs> awesome. Uh, can you talk a little bit about? Um, you have something called the sim oh, simultaneous localization and mapping technology. So you're using an optical optic navigation technology. Can you can you tell us a little bit about getting around navigation navigation? 
yeah, th that uh, self-localization and mapping uh, uh, techniques is uh, something that comes from the robotics field. Yeah, many uh, people that are doing robotics know this kind of uh, algorithm is usually to navigate on the ground uh, in unknown places and avoid maybe hazards or uh, just uh, measure your speed, position, and, and stuff like that. Uh, we decided that we want to use similar techniques uh, since we already have cameras, as Sandy said before, cameras on a spacecraft. And since we already uh, are required by the GLXP uh, rules to to take uh, video uh, video shots of the landing sequence itself, why not using the same input and see if we can realize our uh, our path trajectory uh, parameters like uh, altitude, position, uh, velocities, and and so on. Uh, this is a very uh, this is a very hard problem in in uh, in the landing uh, itself because there are no GPS around. There is no GPS system around the moon, mm -hmm. so you can't really uh, measure this uh, uh, in information with respect to the moon. The only way to really measure these things uh, with respect to the moon is have a certain uh, way uh, certain kind of sensors uh, that we cannot really allow ourselves to take on board the spacecraft because they have uh, th they are really heavy uh, their power consumption is very uh, large uh, so we decided to use the same system that we already have on board uh, uh, to navigate and SLAM is one way to do that basically what you do is taking pictures uh, one after another and you look at the surface and what you try to do is to track features between two consecutive pictures. So you have one features or maybe 100 features in each image. You look at the next picture, you look for the same 100 features, and you can assume, unless you have aliens on the surface, that nothing has moved on the surface between this, these two pictures. So, but the picture has changed. So you can only assume that the spacecraft has moved, and then you can, if you know some geometry and some more complicated maybe in yeah, mathematics, you can actually calculate everything you want to know about the trajectory of the spacecraft. So this is what we're doing in order to uh, localize ourselves with respect to the lunar surface. Cool. Um, I'd like to hear from each of you if you have a part of the mission you're looking most forward to, uh, and maybe a part of the, um, the mission that you think is the most challenging. Wow. <laughs> Well, first of all, I'm looking for the launch <laughs> because uh, this is a this is something amazing. I, I've been uh, in operations uh, when we launched a uh, communication satellite. Oh no, uh, we seem to have lost contact with our group. Uh, wait just one second. I will uh, give them a ping so we can continue chatting with them. Uh, remember, if you would like to ask a question or leave a comment for our group, you can do so using the question and answer or Q&A app. Uh, you can, uh, we will get to your questions and comments on air from there. Uh, you can also use that app to chat a bit about projects. Uh, so be sure to use that. Um, I'm checking the comments on the page as well. Uh, Derek says, hat tip on your relation with the Elan Ramon Foundation. Uh, I will give them your question as soon as they come back. I see they are working to get their their connection back on. Uh, so thank you, Derek, for that. Uh, and I will add in a little bit that, uh, like like you have, I'm also still a big space geek. Uh, I love uh, science and science fiction. They go in hand in hand together quite well. Uh, so this is, uh, but this projects like this really are inspiring to people because they see real people, <laughs> people in real life, uh, actually working on projects that go into space and sending things into space. And so, uh, hopefully, with projects like this, we're really capturing the imagination of young people uh, about space all over again. Uh, just getting a message that they are working on technical difficulties on their end. Uh, if they can hear, if you guys can hear me, we can't see or hear you yet. Um, I've got a little blue icon for them so far. <laughs> uh, when they get back, we'll talk um, in addition to hearing more about the engineering challenges. Uh, I'll we'll ask them about something they're calling the Apollo effect and how they are 
hoping that this mission will really inspire uh, kids across Israel uh, to get interested in STEM, where STEM stands for science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. Those have all been rolled together uh, into sort of one mega discipline uh, since they overlap so well. Uh, just a, another minute while they try and reconnect. <laughs> There's always some kind of little internet issues. Uh, I will go ahead and resend them the link. Um, uh, like I was mentioning the Apollo effect before, uh, I can say I'm very jealous of all those who actually got to watch the Apollo missions and landings uh, as they happened. I was, I am too young for that, unfortunately. Uh, so I've only gotten to see them long after the fact, but I still get emotional every time I watch the Apollo 11 landing uh, video uh, with um, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin. Uh, I get emotional, even though I wasn't there, and that was something that was really inspiring to me as a kid and as a teenager uh, to get into uh, interested in space and astronomy. Um, one more plug while we're waiting for them to reconnect. Um, so CosmoQuest is the project that uh, Pamela Gay runs that I work for. Uh, we are exploring the moon as well in a different way. Uh, we're using uh, images from the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter to map the surface of the moon uh, at really high resolution and with the hope that uh, these maps, in addition to doing some really good science, uh, we are also getting some really good maps um, of the surface and really close by maps of the surface that'll help these teams that will help these teams uh, pick a landing site uh, from these really high resolution maps of the entire surface. And can I call them back? Let's see. All right, again, you get to see me. Uh, what does Pamela always say? Making the sausage. <laughs> no, it's not the best promotion for internet, <laughs> Elad. Good point, unfortunately. But these things happen no matter where you are. Uh, I had one show canceled a couple weeks ago because the power went out at someone's home and office, so they had no internet in either place, and I had to wing the show <laughs> at the last minute. Uh, so I hope that's. Uh, I hope you're enjoying my winging it this time, while I resend them the link. Um, I'll try email as well. Apologies again for all the tech difficulties. We're having a, such a lovely time chatting as well. Uh, -da -da. I think they're going to try one more time to come into the chat. I will keep this open for them. Uh, I want to point out a really cute picture that they posted uh, on the event page of them with a model of the spacecraft. Let me see if I can screen share that while we're doing this. Oops, that's not the one. I, that is a, a nice little image of the spacecraft, but I wanted to show Whoa. you. Oh, they're back! Yay! <laughs> I was Hi. just showing off a little picture of you guys with your model spacecraft. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the only one engineer solved the problem here. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, how many engineers does it take? How many rocket scientists does it take to keep <laughs> that's going with Israel's strongest internet pipe? Was it something I said? Uh, yeah, the internet just gave up on you. Uh, yeah, sorry about that, everybody. So we were talking about uh, your favorite part. You, for you, you were saying that seeing the launch was one of your favorite parts. So why don't you continue with that? Yeah. Um, you, you started with the launch. No, <laughs> see what they did. Your turn. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. Well, what part are you most excited about, Sandy? Okay, so I think launch will be the, like, the best answer, but as a hardware engineer, I think the integration is. Because seeing all the parts together, seeing the spacecraft first, standing, seeing all the cameras, checking all the subsystems, I think that will be the most exciting part for me. And I think the most challenging part will be the landing, because space Air spacecraft is landing without any of our help. So we have like 12 minutes of errors that was in the curiosity. So we're going to wait. I have a, an unagreement uh, issue with Yoav. He wants to send pictures during the landing. We will. I think we won't. 
We will send. I'm going to hack so, the computer. I'm going to hack the computer. We will send some pictures. I'm not you. allowing to <laughs> unresolved issues. Off the cameras, yeah. So then we'll we'll decide about it later. But that will be a hard decision to take, and I think the landing will be. I don't know. I'm not sure if I'll make it. <laughs> I'm I'm gonna. I already uh, said a few friends that I'm gonna buy more nails because I don't know <laughs> if I have enough during the landing. If I will have enough nails to chew while the landing goes on. Um, but th these things are obviously exciting. The launching, the integration, seeing the, the spacecraft as a whole the first time. But but, but I have a kind of a. I, I wouldn't say it's a dream or a vision. It's, it's a picture that goes through my mind sometimes that. I'm imagining myself sitting in the in the control room uh, w w with my colleagues, and we do nothing, just wait for stuff to, to happen, and uh, look at the cameras of the spacecraft, and everything is dark. And at a certain point, seeing the the moon gets into the field of view of one of the spacecraft, and just see it in the first time live, the spacecraft has arrived to the moon. I have this kind of an image. It's, uh, for me, it's a kind of a very exciting. Uh, and again, moment. the cameras will be it's closed. I will I will have the shutter on my. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to give a different kind Stop of answer, guys. Uh, I'm going to give a different kind of an answer, one that's happening here on Earth. Uh, we have a dream at Space IL that in Kikara Bean, the main square in Tel Aviv, will be full of people celebrating and watching as this new moment in Israeli ha history happens. We like to say that if we landed on the moon and no one knows about it, then we haven't done anything. Mm. Uh, and so we're working f not at the landing. We're working now until the landing to be in classrooms all over Israel and around the world to share our story with kids, um, whether it's in the classroom or online or doing cartoons after school, wherever we can find them, we want to share this spacecraft with them so that they'll believe that this is their spacecraft too, uh, and so that they'll be watching when we land and create history together. Uh, it's called an Apollo moment, an Apollo effect. So everybody who was around when the Apollo mission succeeded, they know where they were, they know what they ate for dinner that night, they know who was pitching for the Mets, they remember. Uh, and we want to create that kind of a moment uh, in the 21st century for, for our country. Uh, and it will be quite a historic moment. Excellent, excellent. Can you tell us a little bit um, about what kinds of outreach efforts you have going on now and what are you planning as it gets close to launch? Sure. So right now we are uh, we have a network of hundreds of volunteers all over Israel. These are scientists, educators, aficionados, people who are geeks and nerds who we want to take out into the world and share this story with kids all over Israel. We've now met with uh, over 60,000 kids all over Israel um, for free. You can on our website order a presentation in your classroom. Uh, and someone will come and present wearing our, our t-shirts and hand out stickers. Uh, we do uh, educational uh, programming online. We have all kinds of cool curriculum and videos and, and games. Uh, the idea is to reach people wherever they are and share the story. We're doing more and more work abroad to share the, our story with communities around the world. And we have all kinds of crazy ideas between now and the landing. Uh, maybe we'll project the launch clock on Azrieli Towers where we're sitting right now so everybody in Tel Aviv can see when we're going to land. Or maybe we'll have a tour bus that's traveling all over Israel, a uh, traveling space laboratory. We have all kinds of cool ideas. Uh, all of you out there are welcome to join us and uh, contribute your own part to be a part of it as well. Excellent. Uh, we have a couple questions, uh, one from uh, Bora Honan and also from Afik Israeli. Uh, when will the launch occur? What's the proposed launch date? So the launch, the golden question. Uh, currently, the deadline for the launch uh, according to the GLXP uh, competition, is the end of 2015. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a really aggressive time. We're exploring some launch options then, but it's going to be hard for any team to launch by the end of 2015. Mm -hmm. The competition has already been extended a few times, and we think they're going to extend it again. We'll see. Uh, so we're looking at launch opportunities uh, from the end of 2015 through the end of 2016. That's kind of a rough estimate at this point. We'll have much more news on that, we hope, very soon. Okay. So, so uh, you can, you know, pencil it into your calendar now, but keep a close eye on that. When you um, hear from Space Al about our launch, you'll know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we also got a comment uh, from Derek Tweedy. Uh, hat tip on your relationship with the Ilan Ramon Foundation. Last time that you spoke, uh, apparently, uh, last time you spoke on Reddit, you mentioned you were going to pay homage to Ilan in some way. Are there any ideas coming to mind? Can you tell us a little bit about that partnership and, and uh, what might be happening there? Absolutely. So uh, Ilan Ramon is 
one of all of our inspirations. All of our engineers grew up uh, during uh, Elon's mission and during the catastrophe. And Rona Ramon, his widow, is one of our close and earliest supporters. And it's really in his vision and legacy that we pursue this project. So partnering with the Ramon Foundation is just a natural fit for both of our organizations. And uh, we're so honored to have their support. Uh, Ilan Ramon took a nano Torah, a nano Bible, uh, to the moon with him. We'll have the same Bible well, on board. Not to the moon. Oh, oh, sorry, to, to, orbit. To, to orbit with him, sorry. Uh, we expect to have that with us on the moon. Uh, and a, fun, a few other fun uh, ways to pay homage. But um, without Ilan Ramon, we may not, none of us may be here. Um, so really, it's in his, his... Do you guys have anything else to say about that? No. <laughs> Uh, for those of you uh, who who aren't aware, Alain Ramon was uh, the Israeli first Israeli astronaut who was on uh, STS-107, which was the uh, mission of the Space Shuttle Columbia, which ended in a catastrophe on February 1st, 2003. So uh, that is uh, who they're talking about that inspired them. Um, sure, many of us do remember that day uh, when that happened, and that that is also. Unfortunately, that is etched in our minds, just as the triumphs of something like the Apollo mission are, are etched in our minds and memories as well. Uh, we also had a comment from Nancy Graziano, since you were we were talking about Apollo, the Apollo effect. Uh, I, I, was, I was complaining a bit while you guys were trying to get back on that I did not see the Apollo missions. They happened before my time, and I'm very jealous of that. Uh, so I'm looking forward to these new missions. Uh, and Nancy Graziano says, uh, the Apollo it missions are etched in my memory. They were instrumental in fostering my love of space and astronomy. So that, that is true for a lot of people. Uh, so yeah, I am looking forward to all of these moonshots <laughs> uh, for that. Um, Elad Avron asks, do you have a speech ready in your mind for what you're going to say? <laughs> no. <laughs> Look at little no. part, little <laughs> there. Well, um, what would you say, Yoav, when you land? How how I, would you address the country? Let me try. Yes, please. Um, I I think that if we ask people uh, what is the uh, what was the greatest, most um, inspirational technolo technological achievement of all times, it will be the Apollo landing on the moon. And when people saw those guys, those astronauts, walk on the surface of the moon, it gave them hope and awe. Because if they could put people on the moon, then everything is possible. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's, it's amazing. It, and we, we, there's, since then, there was nothing that can be comparable to that. And if we... Um, I, I think that... Um, uh, the, 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 what, what drives me crazy is that we were, uh, didn't even, uh, weren't even born then, uh, not just you, all of us also, and it, it's crazy, it's crazy, and the X, uh, uh, X Prize uh, uh, competition has given us the opportunity uh, to do something grand, to, to drive kids into STEM studies and to, to um, uh, to take chance and um, and dare mighty things, and this is what we aim to do. This is the goal of, of this whole project. I think Thank that you. I think that we're <laughs> we're really thinking about tomorrow because we have a lot of problems to solve. So none of us, as you see, he asked the question, but none of us has thought of something to say at the day, at the end. But I think that two years from now or at launch day. After the spacecraft will land, I think that all of us will sit in a room thinking, okay, so what will be the next thing? And that will be a big question for, for each of us. Looking forward. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just say we hope the speech is not, uh, we crashed, we're sorry. Uh, <laughs> we hope it's a celebration. But uh, I'll also say that um, we once met with our PR. We have a we have a great uh, pro bono PR agency here in Israel. They help us a little bit with our communications to Israeli society and, and uh, share of communications. They're amazing folks. And uh, we asked them once, "What happens if we crash? How do we explain it to the country?" And they said, "Listen, these are great PR people. They said if you crash, it's the best thing that could ever happen." We said, "How could that be?" 
They said, well, if you crash, you face the nation and you say, with tears in your eyes, we failed this time, but tomorrow we begin building the next spacecraft. And you're going to join us then. We still don't think that's the best outcome, no, but no. Um, <laughs> that's... You know, that's the way to, that's how we think about this project. That, uh, it's a risky no, mission. No matter what happens, this will be, we will land the first Israeli spacecraft on the moon. Hopefully it's on the first chance. Excellent, excellent. Uh, Tomer asks, what is the current status of the project? Uh, so maybe you can give me an overview of the different systems and where they stand. Uh, and uh, <laughs> wants to know, where do we stand and are we winning the race? <laughs> um, well... Maybe I would say I would say the following: uh, We are fin finalizing our, our design. This means that once this is our this are finalized, uh, we are, we can go to full scale development. Uh, these things is is in the, in the in the next months or so. It means that once you are at that stage, you can start uh, purchasing uh, the hardware. Mm -hmm. uh, we call it. Uh, well, the metals of the spacecraft. It means producing the uh, propulsion system. Once you uh, you've designed the propulsion system, uh, you cannot purchase it before you know that everything is final. So, in a month or so, we will be able to uh, uh, issue a purchase order for a propulsion system, and then we issue a purchase order for the rest of the stuff. Uh, Some of the longest lead items we've already begun developing. Uh, like the transceivers and the, and even computer. parts of the computer and propulsion system itself, uh, but we, we can't do that full final uh, full scale development and assembly until all of these design questions are complete. Sorry to cut you off. Uh, as you have mentioned, we're also in negotiations for our final launch agreement. Uh, once those two steps are complete, we'll be we'll have a launch clock ticking and. Uh, you'll start to see pieces of spacecraft on tables. Uh, that's a matter of months, not years. And pieces of engineers. <laughs> <laughs> um, in terms of the competition, uh, we know that there are several serious teams, and we know that we're one of the most serious teams. Uh, so you guys will have to ask the other teams, tweet at them, and, and check up on them. We're dying to know as well. Uh, but we know that SpaceIL is at the top or in the top of the leaderboard. Excellent, excellent. So yeah, we're going to have, I mean, the moon's just going to have several visitors, it seems, if, if, if any of these projects are going well, that uh, no matter who gets there first, the moon will have several visitors, and I think that's fantastic, too. So about how many people are working on the project? You mentioned some, uh, you guys are all, have all joined on, but uh, you mentioned some volunteers as well. Yeah, we're, we're nearly 30 full-time staff, and we have over 200 volunteers all over Israel. Uh, so it's really become this national movement of science lovers, geeks, engineers, uh, and dreamers who are trying to change the change the world. I think what's amazing about the volunteers is for every problem we have, we can find someone in Israel who has an answer for talking about lens in space. So we have a few companies that helps us and gives us advices. And if we're talking about cameras that we're going to use or hardware we're going to use or how we should handle software in space and reset in space. So we're trying to get knowledge from all the companies. Being a nonprofit organization helps us because we get answers from all over. So when I'm talking about cameras, I'm getting the best volunteers I can. When I'm, we're talking about radar solutions for um, moon proximity sensors, so we also have volunteers from each of that discipline that we can choose. So we're aiming to have the best volunteers in each discipline in order to advise us for every piece of hardware and software we're taking us. So that's amazing, learning from everyone how to build the smallest and the smartest Israel space. I would like to add to that. Uh, there are so many people that try and, and want to join us. So we, so we we can get help from so many people. We are only 30, maybe more or less 30 uh, uh, people employed full time, employees full time. But um, Sandy and I and myself began as as volunteers, and both of us were volunteers for I think one one and a half years before we joined full time, and we left our jobs. But even today, so many people want to 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 join and help us, and I wish we could uh, let them all in. Uh, it's amazing. This is, I think, uh, the, the beginning of the Apollo effect because people want to, to 
to be part of that. And this is the best way to for us to get knowledge and share knowledge among people. Uh, and, and it's happening now uh, while we work. We should also mention our amazing sponsors. Uh, there's people and volunteers and then organizations and companies who have our backs and support us to the fullest. So the Israeli Aerospace Industries, that's like the Israeli Boeing. Over there, we're building the spacecraft. We're working in their facilities, and their engineers are volunteering tens of thousands of engineering hours. Without IAI, we would have no project, and uh, it's an amazing partnership. We have Bezek and Yes Networks. That's like the Israeli cable company. They put free commercials on primetime television for us to share the story with the country. Uh, we have the Weizmann Institute and Tel Aviv University from academia uh, and educational partners from all over Israel, people helping us uh, in so many ways. And so go to our sponsors page and check on our website and check out who's working with us and thank them because it's an amazing, uh, an amazing partnership all around. It's making it a national project instead of our project. I think that's the main goal. So uh, you guys have reached out to something like 50,000 to 70,000 students already across across the country. Can you tell us anything about these school visits? I'm looking at some, some really cute pictures I might show some while you're talking. Yeah, it, please feel free. Uh, so Professor Ben Israel, he's the head of the Israeli Space Agency, sits on our board, and he told us very on, early on in the project that when you deal in science education, kids love three things. They love space, robots, and dinosaurs. We have a robotic spacecraft, so we got two out of three. Maybe we'll find a dinosaur on the surface of the moon. <laughs> uh, and if not, then we're still at... Uh, did we lose you guys? No. Oh, no. she's showing pictures. Great. Uh, it's always the same. We show up for the classroom visits. The kids start, uh, are, are fidgety in their chairs, but then we start sharing the story, and their eyes are brightened up, their jaws drop, and they say, wow, that's amazing. That I've never heard anything like that. And when you bring real-time exciting engineering like this uh, to kids, you can't lie to kids. They know what's real and what's not, and mm -hmm. they're just excited. Uh, and it excites us all. We all go to the classrooms and share the story. Um, it doesn't matter if they're in elementary school or in high school. They're all the, way up, uh, all the way throughout. They ask incredible questions, and they are super inquisitive, and uh, it's for these kids that we're all here. And they have a lot of ideas. Yeah. Better ideas than any of you on this chat, for sure. <laughs> Kids ask some of the best questions, I find. Yeah. You're absolutely they ask the best questions. Yeah, very cool. Um, I also wanted to sh oops. I also wanted to sh briefly again uh, the picture uh, that was posted in the uh, in the Google event page. Uh, is this the actual proposed size? Is this the actual size of the spacecraft, or is it is it is that to scale? Yeah, that's a one for one model. Awesome. And about how uh, it looks like it do wouldn't be too hard to carry. How heavy is it going to be for launch? It will be 140 kilograms okay. at launch. Excellent. That's not fully loaded yeah. with radioactive <laughs> rocket fuel, but you know, you get the picture. <laughs> those are our three co-founders in that picture. Uh, <laughs> They're great guys, and I hope they're watching. One of them, we should say, Yariv, just had a baby today. Yeah. Huge mazal to Mr. Yariv Bash. Oh, 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 just had a baby boy. Yeah, two uh, hours ago. We don't wow. wow, congratulations. So baby wow. and moon. <laughs> so it's a huge mazal to and congratulations to Mr. Yariv Bash. And Noah. And Noah, his, his wife, wife. <laughs> more importantly. <laughs> It sounds like you guys have a really close kind of friendly family atmosphere on your team. We have to. We've been doing that for a couple of years, and we need to yeah. do it together. We need yeah. to solve everything together. We go to sleep with that. We wake up in the morning with that. Everything we do is related to the spacecraft. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, I also wanted to, since we're speaking of children, uh, there is a Space IL Kids part of your website where kids can color, uh, do coloring sheets of a an astronaut and the spacecraft itself, and they can build their own model uh, spacecraft and astronaut. So, so go check that out, because I love hands-on <laughs> fun activities yeah. like that. So uh, check that out. at the So the website is spaceil.com. Uh, and yet the, the Space Kids section looks really cute, and I kind of want to sit here and color rather than <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>
Excellent, excellent. Um, reminder, if there are any uh, qu last questions you guys wanted to get in, uh, please use the Q&A or the question and answer app. It should ask you if you want to join the conversation right on the video screen. You can click that to get to the app and uh, see where people have been asking questions and leaving comments. Um, do you guys have any um, any particular stories of that you'd like to share of um, your work together in building this spacecraft? Hmm. <laughs> mm. Special sure. story. Yep. There's so many. <laughs> well, the bar napkin is, is the start. The napkin is a good one. I'll share a quick story that uh, we travel around the world sharing our story with communities all over the place uh, to bring them in. Um, and I went with Kfir Damari, one of our other co-founders, to Chicago once to present Space IL to a, a conference of reform rabbis. Uh, and I never thought I'd be sharing, uh, presenting in front of a few hundred rabbis, but here we were. And uh, it was an amazing moment. We looked into the crowd, and all these rabbis had tears in their eyes. And they came up to us and said, it's been so long since we've seen a project like this that uh, shows Israel in this light, and that is uh, such a positive influence on our kids. And they asked for our autographs. I never thought I'd be autographing programs for Reform Rabbis in North America. So thank you, CCAR. <laughs> you know what? You, you remind me of a story. I had the chance also to, to, to talk to, and it was also in, it was in New Jersey, I think. I had the, the chance to talk to uh, 300 kids, fifth graders, uh, 300 kids that asked me, the, the, the Jewish community there, asked me to give uh, a talk about space cell and do it some, do, to, do, to prepare something interactive for them. Uh, this is where I got my first uh, questions that, uh, uh, from, from kids, but I, I was quite afraid of that because I thought 300 fifth graders kids, I, I, I thought I would have no chance of, of putting out any, any word. Uh, and as, as Daniel said before, Kids love uh, space, robots, and dinosaurs, and this is exactly what happened. I was there on stage. They put these three kids in their in their uh, sports uh, auditorium in, in the, the basketball uh, uh, court. Everyone was sitting there, and they just listened. They they were uh, focused on what uh, ever what they, whatever I had to say. Whenever I gave them a task, they grouped together. They thought about things, and then they they just communicated. Uh, I wouldn't say very politely, but it was it was a fun experience. Uh, I I never believe uh, I could never believe that I could speak to 300 kids at once and everyone would would, uh, would be listening to me. And I think the amazing thing is when children ask your signature at the end, <laughs> and then you say we made it. Instead of wanting them to be a reality stars, they wanted to be scientists. And I yes. So and another thing that was more related, more closer to me that. Um, inspire girls to go and study science. So two months ago, I think, came a girl to space idea who was going to learn astrophysics, and I told her, "Let's work. If you have any questions, I want you to ask and tell your story during the way, because it's really important. Just now, we're two women at the technology working for the spacecraft, mm -hmm. and you. yeah, so." It's it's important for me to talk to girls, make them want to learn more about hardware and computer science, and lead the industry as well as. Maybe one word on, on science we didn't mention at all. Space all also uh, one of the agendas or, or uh, things that uh, special tries to do is promoting science, uh, uh, not only education but the actual science, and we explore options to conduct science, actual science on the lunar surface itself. Uh, we do that with uh, uh, the collaboration of the Weizmann Institute, and we spoke maybe about Ilan um, uh, Ramon before. It reminds me of another story. Ilan Ramon, uh, before he went to the uh, space station, he he looked for a science Shuttle. experiment, a uh, space uh, shuttle. Yeah, and he looked for a science experiment. They did the station as well. I thought they had. No, oh no, no you're right. You're right. They did. Yeah, so he was looking for an idea for uh, uh, for conducting a, a science experiment, a real science experiment in in space, and he came to Weizmann and he spoke with uh, who was uh, was my supervisor. And remember the day he came to Weizmann to speak and get ideas for my supervisor uh, for an experiment. Uh, eventually, he didn't choose that experiment; he chose another one. 
but uh, this is all part of it. It's, uh, it's science, STEM studies, everything is it's every everything is promoting, taking us uh, forward. Yeah, yeah. STS 107 was one of the last, if not the last, uh, purely science shuttle missions, and that uh, it was all science experiments for the whole mission. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a comment from Karen Landsmond. Uh, we are proud to be Israeli space geeks and support Space IL. So, yay, space geeks. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's my wife. <laughs> I was like, wait, I know that last name. <laughs> and we have uh, a question from Dotan, sir. Um, do you have a name for the craft? Ooh, so <laughs> we have a. We started with a test name because you have to give something a name. And when we first started the project, they called it the Sparrow because we're a tiny country and we have a tiny spacecraft. So instead of the Eagle, we have the Sparrow. Uh, but when we finish completion of the spacecraft, we're going to do a, some form of campaign on Facebook or social media to come up with a new permanent uh, spacecraft. Some people like David, like David and Goliath. Some people have other ideas, but it'll be something patriotic and exciting. Jimmy. So if you have ideas for a spacecraft, you can message us on Facebook or tweet, tweet it at us. We'd, we'd love to hear from you. Sure. Can you tell us all the different ways people can follow your progress or chat with you online? So find us on Facebook, Team Space IL. Go to spaceil.com and sign up for our newsletter. Okay. Um, you can find us on Twitter at Team Space IL as well. And Instagram, of course. Uh, we're every, we try to be everywhere. Um, and wherever you are, this is now your spacecraft too. So and, and Google Plus, of course. And of course, Google Plus. Uh, so <laughs> this is now your spacecraft too. Uh, we want to hear from you. We want you to share our story with your communities. We want you to share our story with your children. And we hope that uh, we hear from you and see you throughout this mission. And that when we land, you'll be watching with us and uh, you'll celebrate with us as well. It's <laughs> Chicago. <laughs> Uh, Afik Israeli asks another tough question. Uh, after you land on the moon, are you thinking of attempting a Mars landing? Well, we talk about it. Okay. No, we we say that there's a chance we'll miss the cap. Uh, one of the most important maneuvers is capturing the moon. It's called the lunar capture maneuver. There's a chance we miss it, and then we get to Mars directly. <laughs> well, well, I'll say that when we. Uh, when we meet with kids, they always ask, well, what are you going to do with the prize money? What's the next project? And since we're an educational nonprofit, all the prize money will go for the next project in educa STEM educational programming here in Israel. Uh, so we ask the kids, what would you do in the next pro project? And they have the best ideas. Some kids say, let's do a probe to Mars. Let's do a submarine to the deepest parts of the ocean. One kid in L.A. a few months ago said, let's build a flying car, and I thought that was a pretty cool idea. So, again, we'll, we'll probably use the <laughs> we'll opportunity. We'll talk about it later. <laughs> we'll talk about it later, but we want to hear everybody's ideas. And the idea is to show people really exciting, challenging, and ambitious engineering that excites and inspires them to think about their missions, their problems that they want to solve, whether it's a science one or otherwise. So you're sending your spacecraft, your baby, to the moon. Exactly. How do each of you feel if uh, if you were offered a chance to go to the moon yourself? Would you take it? Wow. <laughs> Is it a one-way ticket, or do we get to come back? It, you can come back. It's, it, the moon's, like, right nearby. It's risky. It's risky. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. Yeah, well, would you go? The study will take your cameras. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I don't know. I want to be last. I always wanted to be in space. Uh, Moon, I think it's kind of scary, mm -hmm. and uh, I, would, I would think about it, but space, definitely, I want to shout, shout at it, yeah. Excellent. It's risky anyway, but yeah. I'm terrified of space. I like it on Earth. <laughs> Fear of heights. <laughs> It'll be on the surface of the moon. <laughs> yeah, I probably got sick on the launch, but... Your wife is listening, yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> you might give a good answer. I'll take my little spaceship. Oh, that's adorable. Can you hold that up again? Hmm? Can you hold that up again? Is that a little yeah. death toy? <laughs> oh, that's adorable. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, looking, I don't think we have any last questions from the audience. Um, maybe you guys can go down the line and uh, let us know how we can, again, follow you, follow your work. Uh, 
or maybe if you have, you have one last message about Space IL for, for our audience. So our biggest message is join us mm -hmm. because we want to be a national project and worldwide project. And again, we you can do, do Facebook, Team Space IL, our website, spaceil.com, Instagram, and Twitter. So we want to see you. Excellent, excellent. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me. Uh, so thank you. This is the Space IL. Thank you, thank you Nicole, for hosting us. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I'm really inspired by this and, and can't wait to see you guys uh, progress and get to the moon. This is going to be so great. Uh, thank you everyone for watching, for commenting, sending in questions. Uh, this is the Google Lunar X Prize team hangout number seven. Uh, once again, I'm Nicole Gallucci filling in for Pamela Gay. Uh, if you're going to be up tonight, 12 hours from now, uh, I'll be doing the Learning Space Hangout with uh, Arvind Gupta from Toys, for, uh, Toys from Trash. So another 12 hours from now, we'll be do I'll be doing another Hangout on Air for CosmoQuest. Thank you, everybody, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye! Bye.